Hello and welcome to the Eye on the U podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Hurricanes podcast. I'm David Wilson. I'm joined as always on the other line by Susan Miller Degnan, our Hurricanes beat writer here at the Herald. Susan, we are in the final week of the regular season. Can you believe it? No. It flies by every year. It does. It's like it flies by really fast and it feels like it's a million years long. Yeah, I mean, the, the this season has been, uh, it feels like four different seasons all smashed together. Obviously, the the great start to the season, the kind of inexplicable unraveling of Tyler Van Dyke in the middle of it. Um, well, wait, wait, wait. What about the kneel down? Isn't that part two? The kneel down, yeah, that, that goes, I think, with the, the inexplicable stuff in the middle of the year. Um, and then the last two weeks have been... Uh, two different starting quarterbacks and and both guys, Emory Williams, obviously up in Tallahassee. Uh, you know, I don't want to say Miami almost knocked off Florida State, but they certainly had a shot to, uh, you know, they had the ball with a chance to, to tie the game at the end. Um, and then obviously on Saturday, Louisville comes down and this was one where Miami really had a chance to to score the first signature. Now, the biggest win yet of the Mario Cristobal era, um, mm-hmm. the ball at uh, inside Louisville's five yard line with uh, in the final two minutes down by seven, couldn't punch it in. Uh, and then they get the ball back in a Hail Mary falls short. Um, it, you know, the every, you can say this about 60 teams in America, right? If a couple breaks go differently, we think a lot differently about this team. Um, yep. That certainly has been the story. I think for Miami, these last couple of weeks now, the problem is some of these breaks have been major self-inflicted wounds. You mentioned the kneel down. You know, how much different does this season feel if they, they, they would have put them at 5-0, um, and o, right? That was the fifth fifth game? Um, yeah, would have put them at 5-0, and o and, and just everything yeah. would have – it would have changed the entire tenor of the season. Um, instead, you know, you get that the way it goes, and then obviously Tyler Van Dyke's – real struggles for, for a lot of this season kind of put Miami in a position where they have to start Emory Williams up in Florida state. Um, so a lot of self-inflicted wounds, but again, Miami um, playing a little bit, you know, it, it's hard to be too optimistic about a six and five team, but uh, playing a little bit better down the stretch here. And it, I, I think, I think Miami fans everywhere are thinking like what could have been with this season. I, and I do, I, I totally understand that, uh, that feeling about this team. And I think, but I think UM really needs to win the last two games. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I really think, I don't, I don't even know who they're going to play in a bowl, you know, but I, I don't know. It doesn't, six and five doesn't feel so good. No. Uh, So, um, yeah, I mean. Eight and five wouldn't be great either, but it'd be a major improvement from last year. Right. Yeah, and it sounds a lot better. It does sound a lot better. <laughs> it um, sounds a lot better, which is, I, you know, I mean, it's just perception. And also for the players, it's it's hope, you know, it's it's a positive. I mean, we, we say this every year and, and, and somehow it hasn't worked out recently, but win the last games, you know, finish. Yeah, finish. I mean, it, it, we, yeah. When's the last time they finished the season strong? Like. I literally never that I can remember basically um, going back basically to the entire Mark Richter. I guess the last time what the last time they won a bowl game was um, Mark Rick's first year, right? The 16, I think. Yeah. When they won the uh, champ sports or, bowl or whatever it was yeah, called yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point, Russell athletic. Russell, Russell thing. Athletic yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, obviously that's their last bowl win. Yeah. You know, we're, we're still, we're, we'll have more chances to talk about bowl games coming up in the next couple of weeks. But it just speaks to how poor this team has been at finishing seasons, um, whether it was, you know, obviously the meltdown at the end of the, the 2017 season where they started 10-0 and and then uh, lost three straight to end the year. Um, you know, the, the Manny Diaz's first year where they lose to FIU late in the year and then Louisiana yeah. Tech. Um, yeah. All the bowl losses, the too many to count. Um, last year's Miami team, which was not good for very much of the year at all, but obviously, um, you know, had had a chance to make a bowl game if they went a, a few more games down the stretch and couldn't couldn't even do that. So yeah, I mean, I, I I do think there is, you know, every season stands alone, especially with the transfer portal now, um, that 
uh, momentum. I don't know if it carries over quite as much from year to year, especially with this Miami team where I think both of us wonder about whether, you know, who's going to be playing quarterback for this team next year. Um, who's going to be coaching for this team next year. We'll, we're, we got some big topics to get on at the end of this episode, but um, for this team, I think just the, the fact that, you know, two close calls against top 10 teams in the last two weeks, this season would feel so different if they could have won one of them. Um, for sure. Obviously you have no chance, you know, you're playing Boston college this week, a win, you know, gets you to seven and doesn't really change much. And then the bowl, you're probably not playing anyone, but it's like a marquee win, but um, given all the the close misses this year, um, you know, there, it's one thing to have a bunch of close misses when you take care of business in the rest of your games, right? Then, then you really feel like you're close, right? You're one or two breaks away. The problem with this Miami team has been close misses against good teams and then bad losses to not so good teams like Georgia Tech. Um, so that right. that's why I think winning these last couple um, would be a big deal because Miami teams tend to kind of fold at the end of the season and um, – yeah. Just just getting you know, getting past that hurdle that has plagued this program for so long would, would be important. Yeah, very important. I mean, it's it's a long wait until you know until the spring feels like a long wait, actually. So yeah. Um yeah, you want you want hope, you want positive stories coming out. Um you want recruits to think there's hope. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, the big, big one of the big takeaways coming out of uh, Saturday, I would say, is the play of Tyler Van Dyke. Um, the offense was actually uh, pretty good for the most part. Um, a thirty-point performance for the Canes after they had really, really struggled to move the ball uh, with with Emery for most of the Florida State game the week before, and obviously for the last couple games with Tyler before his benching. Um, First of all, what, what do you think of Tyler Van Dyke on Saturday? And if he plays like that, how much does it change what you think this team, um, just you, just your expectations for this team in the last couple of weeks of this season? Um, I thought I thought Tyler played well. He was really cognizant of not throwing the ball away. But, you know, he had yeah, not throwing the ball to the other team, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, exactly. Throwing the, actually <laughs> throwing the ball away. He did throw the ball <laughs> yeah. away. Right. In fact, Mario Cristobal said, oh, no, no, on the first play from scrimmage, he ran, and I think yeah, he, he had, like, a hard. six- or seven-yard run, yeah. Yeah, so that's – they were really impressed with that. Um, yeah, I thought he had a very good game. He was very aware, self-aware also. Uh, he he scrambled several times, um, you know, to make sure he – you know, to, to make sure he was in the clear um, – he didn't he he didn't throw the ball where it was going to get picked off or mm-hmm. even close you know how in, in the in the games in the middle of the season he'd throw the ball and you'd be like ah, oh yeah <laughs> yeah like ooh, whatever um he threw for 327 yards mm-hmm. um, and and again no no interceptions um he, again he ran when he had to i i, I and he was very confident um yeah, I I thought I I thought it was disappointing the last uh, when they had you know yeah first and first and first and goal from the four and then they had three shots from the three yard line and there were three incompletions after I guess Fletcher ran right for one yeah, yard one yard on the first play yeah. yep that that was all very uh, disappointing I think um, uh, Shannon Dawson I think blamed one of them on Jacoby George. Um, on a slant and no the last play was, was that was the last George. one yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i, I would like to see you know the other big takeaway was obviously mark fletcher just another spectacular performance for him i probably would have liked to see him get the ball one more time in inside the five yard line there i know he only gained one y- yard on the first run but um i mean he he did everything for miami for for long stretches of that game um mm-hmm. you know had some drives where he was basically single-handedly carrying the offense down the field and, and now um, you know, we, we've talked so much about him and, and Ruben Bain that I don't think we need to go too deep on Mark Fletcher, but that's, those two guys are clearly like the, the positive signs, I think, coming out of this season for Miami, that plus the offensive line that we've talked about so much, um, yep. you know, how many times though we talked about impressive freshmen who, uh, you know, I'll, I'm, I'm very interested to see what those two guys do in year two, because that has been, I think the stumbling block for a lot of 
recent uh, very impressive Miami freshman is taking that step in year two. Um, but yeah, Tyler was, you know, he, I, I was really impressed with his, his mobility in the pocket. Obviously he had the one run, but other than that, just like moving around in the pocket, he got hit more than, he has at any point this year um, that Louisville defense is obviously uh, good and, um, you know, it's very creative with their blitzes there to take it, you know, my, that Miami offensive line is not so much. I think of the frustration with Tyler Van Dyke this year is that he has not been under pressure and he's still struggled. Um, he was under a lot of pressure on, um, on Saturday, I think only one sack, right? Or two, not, not a lot of sacks. One, I think only one sack, but got one, hit yeah. at least, you know, four or five times and some hard hits too. Um, and, yeah, he, you know, he, he kept getting up and, and making throws and, you know, I don't have like one play in particular that like stands, you know, you, a lot of times Tyler, he'll, he'll make one or two throws a game that stick with you really. Um, and usually there's one or two good ones and, and maybe a bad one too. Um, I kind of come out of that Tyler Van Dyke game being like, oh, he was just like really solid, like not a whole lot of spectacular high degree of difficulty throws, but as importantly, um, no mistakes. And that was why Miami had a shot at the end there. And um, yeah, it just, just a shame that they couldn't finish it out. And obviously some frustrations with back-to-back weeks with Miami having a real shot to to pull out a signature win and, and missing out on the chance. And now, as we said, like you get a chance, you know, you still have eight wins is still in play, which is, is, you know, I think at the start of the year, eight, nine wins, like, you know, nine wins probably was like the realistic, like successful season. So not, not going to hit that, but um, eight wins is still in play. The problem is you, you missed all of your chances other than A&M at the beginning of the year, which I still think was an impressive win, even though A&M season obviously went off the rails. Like, you're t- like, you're still missing that like signature ACC conference win. You know that they're two and five in conference. What's Mario's record in conference now? It's pretty terrible. I don't think they've won any ACC games at home. At home now. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Or yeah. yes, they did Clemson. Sorry, Clemson and Virginia. They, oh, they yes. won two. No, they haven't won one yes, in regulation. At home. Yeah, I'm they haven't sorry. won one in regulation at home. That's okay. They'd still win. It is. I'll see that. Even though they're kind of ugly, some of them. Yeah. Virginia I don't know um yeah uh Tyler was good I you know they they shot themselves uh and a cut you know with some some bad penalties at the end but that you know that's over with I don't think those guys uh Jacoby George and Brashard Smith will be doing that again yeah yeah some bad you know obviously Mario got a lot of some crap from some people about the timeout that I was totally fine with the timeout call. You know, you're he he explained yeah, it perfectly. It he explained it perfectly after the game. The best chance you had to force overtime there is converting that fourth down play. It's not getting a stop and then uh, a one minute drill. Um, you know, they didn't right. They didn't get score. Like they didn't execute the play they called. Um, so it looks bad. But the penalties were the real. You know, they gave up. I mean, obviously it, it's different. Like it, you don't just. The, the the ending would have been different, but Miami ends up five yards short on the last play and, and gave up 30 yards of field position with uh, two 15 yard penalties on that last drive. So um, again, they, they're shooting themselves in the foot, whether it's the coach <laughs> or the penal, you know, players making penalties or mistakes, obviously turnovers all year. Um, this team still just its own worst enemy, which I, you know, we're not breaking any ground. I don't think by saying that it's been, no. been true for, for a couple of years and, that's why these these last couple games, I just want to see them play like normal football, right? Like, when's the last time they played a normal game? It's been a long time. No, when's like the, the last Texas time? The Texas game is like the last no. normal game they had. And even that one, they got, what, got a punt block in the first minute. Like, it was yeah. I mean, comeback. When's the last time they played a game that you didn't think, oh, my God, we're going to overtime? Yeah, or like, here they we are. go. It's always here we go again with in some <laughs> extent. So, it's... Let's see him go up to to Boston College on Friday. It'll be uh, you know, a little homecoming for for Tyler Van Dyke, who's from Connecticut. Said he's going to have a lot of family at the game on right. Friday. Uh, right. You know, we, I guess we can we should quickly talk yeah. about the idea. It could potentially be Tyler Van Dyke's final game as a Hurricane. Yeah, it could. Um, yeah. You know, you never know with bowl opt outs these days. 
Um, and you know, I, I think. And we Tyler, talked to him. Yeah, I, I mean, certainly to he's he's certainly in that position where it's like you know I don't yeah. think he's he's gonna get drafted if he goes pro, but he's he's old enough that he could say, all right, let's try to make a training camp roster or whatever. He could obviously transfer, yeah. or he could come back. Um, and and you asked him about his future, um, on Tuesday, and and un, not surprising at all, he he kind of, of course, he, gave no answer on it. I'm sure he doesn't even know yet, right? Like I'm sure he's he thought about know. it a little he, bit, but he he might not know. I'm sure he's yeah. thought about it a lot, yeah. but but um, he really might not know. In my opinion, he probably has a strong feeling one way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, but. You know, after he said he didn't know because of all the, you know, problems he's had this season and in every d- different kind of way and all the stress, he said he just wants to focus on, on this game and that's it, which that's fine. Um, he wasn't going to, you know, even if he knows, he's not going to tell us, but we did ask if, uh, if he's, if he's definitely going to a bowl, if they're in a bowl. Barry asked that, are you, you know, with certainty playing in a bowl game? If, um, well, they are in a bowl. This yeah, season. they are in a bowl. Yep. Can you say whether you're certainly going to be in the bowl game? Because that's the season. And he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't answer that either. Um, he said that again, he wants to, doesn't want to think about any of that stuff now. Mm-hmm. So to me, that was kind of, that was the point where I thought, okay, I don't know. Uh, then then I started getting skeptical. I think we all did, you know. Um, yeah. You know, but I, yeah, it would be easy for him to say I am coming back and all that kind of stuff, right? Like, well, like, yeah, but I understand where he didn't say I am coming back. No, I know, I know, I, I know. Understand, but uh, but I could see him saying I'm, um, but you know, but I could see him saying, yeah, I'm good. I would, I will play in a bowl, right? But, but then again. If he decides to transfer, let's say, let's say that's his decision, maybe you don't want to play in a bowl. You don't want to get hurt. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you don't want to get hurt. The poor guy. You don't want yeah, to get Yeah, I mean, hurt. he's been, obviously been really injury played. He looked yeah. healthy on Saturday. I will say he took a beating, but he, he never looked like gimpy. I mean, he was obviously slow getting up on some of those hits. Um, but he never, you know, like I said, he, he was moving, I thought, around pretty well in the pocket. Was um, you know we know he's had some rib stuff and he was taking some shots to the the torso and never, you know it's not like his throws were like super errant or anything he didn't seem to be laboring but um, yeah a lot of variables I think with Tyler Van Dyke in these last um, couple of weeks the other big I guess question mark as we go into the last couple of weeks of the season is Lance Gidry um, who has been uh, kind of a revelation for Miami I know and they gave up thirty eight on Saturday um, but. We I think we said it on here a couple of weeks ago. That's like the first like real like home run hire Mario Cristobal has made. Um, you know, I think some of the position oh. coaches they've hired have, have been good too. Um, yeah. and obviously like Jose Mirabal, like Mirabal, I I, I he's uh, home. Sorry, man. Alex Mirabal. Like I I don't um yeah, he we knew he, he was a known commodity. Like Lance Gidry, they yeah. plucked out from a lower level. And, um, and probably Jason Taylor's probably a really yeah good exactly I'm sure there's some position coaches uh, we don't get to know enough about them but Gidry has like uh you know came from lower level football and now you know rumors that USC could be targeting him LSU could be targeting him yep. um, he's been uh just a, a major success for Miami and and rebuilding that defense. He really has. And th- this last game was not their best game. On no. defense. And he talked about that. He said, hey, we were off. Um, and sometimes it happens. And that Louisville was really good. Yeah, that Louisville offense. I mean, that, oh, my God. That yeah. game. It reminds me of, like, so the peak wake offenses, like, from a couple years ago, where it was just uh-huh. like, you're like, how are you ever going to stop these guys? Just like they're open on every play. There's so much uh, mesh offense. There's so much motion. Um, I think 12 different guys caught passes for them. Like, um, yeah, you would, the, to me, the the big concern that coming out of that game from Miami was they didn't get to the quarterback at all. Zero sacks. Um, and Leonard right. Taylor was out, but yeah, for, I mean, every other game this year, pretty much the defense. That was the first time. Me. Yeah. Like even like some of the, they give up a lot of points against North Carolina, but uh, yeah. like they were good for about 75% of that game. And, and, 
the offense was so bad that or turnovers and stuff that eventually you're going to get beat in college football. This was the first time this year where I was like, oh, the offense, their defense, what's, what's, on, what's wrong with them? Yeah. Uh, I said something to Branson Dean about that yesterday. Mm-hmm. And he said that he, he said, yes, it's true. They, they were this week working on that, but that you don't always, I said it was the first game this year. They have no sacks. Yeah. And he said, but sacks aren't always the end all. No, you know, you've just got to, you've just got to like put pressure, you know, but they, yeah. but they didn't put as but much they didn't put pressure. Right. Yeah. That, no, that's they didn't. Fine. Yeah. It's a yeah, nice no. shorthand to explain how little pressure they got is that they got zero sacks. Yeah. And by the way, another, another coach who I think has done really well this year is Kevin Beard. Yeah. I those think. wide receivers are, across the board are better. And, um, you know, uh, I Xavier Restrepo is closing in on a thousand yards with the bowl game. Yeah. He'll, he'll almost definitely get it, I would think. What he's about a hundred. Unless Tyler doesn't play. Yeah, I mean, I guess. By the way, I've thought of that too. And yeah. by the way, I ju- I just have to, you know, one more thing, as they say. Uh, as far as Tyler goes in that bowl game, if he does not play in that bowl game, um, then we'll talk about this again. Yeah, uh, we'll have plenty of time. To they only have one scholarship quarterback left, and yeah. he. Has- played at all and i'm not sure he wants to play at all so you know then it's like woo man yeah four, four walk-ons who i can't imagine in a million years they'll play that would be really interesting and uh yeah. for Sherman smith who by the way will get just i don't know I, i'll reserve that i'll tell you what he played quarterback for palmetto in the the playoffs a couple of years ago and um that offense did not score a lot of points but he was awesome. He was he was a change of field position and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the the offense is uh, I don't know. I mean, at least Jakari they they've saved his red shirt. He can can play without burning it. But um, you know, as you said, with the transfer portal, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, I I, don't, I have no idea about what he's thinking about his future. But um, I would definitely think that the transfer portal is a possibility for him after he went from starting multiple games last year to. Uh, third on the depth chart um, behind a true freshman who was, you know, I think impressive with his like maturity and mentality and moxie, but not like, not like he was lighting the world on fire with his arm. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Agree with everything you say. Um, All right. Anything else before we get going? Uh, No. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. What's your, what's your favorite Thanksgiving food? Oh man! I put you on the I, spot. Oh yeah, no, I love it all. I love the sweet potatoes as long as there's like really brown, bubbly marshmallows on it. Uh huh. Um, I love homemade bread. My husband's like an incredible cook, so and baker, so I like homemade bread. I like, uh, I like turkey. Hey, I'm I, I like, like turkey. turkey. I don't know why people don't like it. I, I agree. If you cook it right. It's like moist and. Oh my God. I like homemade gravy. I like every kind of potato. I like even like salad. I like everything about Thanksgiving. I like family. And of course I'll be traveling. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You get, you get, you only get half of your Thanksgiving because you get to fly up to Boston on uh, Thursday. I'm, I'm a, I like stuffing. Zero Thanksgiving. What do you mean? Half. (laughs) Okay. Um, I, I like stuffing and I like pumpkin pie. So, oh, I like stuffing too. Yeah, yeah. And oh. I like making a sandwich, obviously, the next day. That's the oh. that's the best part of Thanksgiving. So um, all right. Uh we can close things <laughs> out there. You can follow Susan on Twitter at S. Miller Degnan. Um, check her out in uh Chestnut Hill this weekend. I'm sure none of our listeners are making that trip, but uh you never know. Um, so if you see her up there, I know uh I've traveled enough with Susan to know we run into people at the airport all the time who want to talk. Uh, canes so let's let's hope david let's hope no hail there won't be any hail fluties but you know the only hail i want is like a, a hail tv day possibly <laughs> i don't even want that oh my god if yeah you want no stress you want a a, a nice 24 oh, to please. 7 miami victory uh you can follow me on twitter at dv wilson too um the Good LB, story uh, on uh, mark fletcher i wrote about mark fletcher this week um yep. And I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch the Miami game on, on Friday afternoon. What else am I going to do? And then you're going to watch the Dolphins game. Yeah, and then and then I'm covering a high school game at night. So it'll be a football-filled Friday. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. So 
Um, anyway, thanks again for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next week.